We are glad to have you back on the G.O.D.'s Light channel. Screwtape Letters Letter 15 Lewis wrote, Humans live in time, but our enemy destines them for eternity. He wants, therefore, that everyone concerns themselves primarily with two things, eternity itself, and that point in time they call the present, because the present is the point at which time touches eternity. The present moment, and only it, is the moment in which God's plans are being fulfilled. He wants men to look at the present with an attitude of trust and acceptance, and at eternity with hope and patience. But the enemy does not want them to think much about the future. Of course, the future should only be glimpsed enough to make prudent plans. Indeed, it is through the future, through fear of the future, that our cause is most likely to prevail. Concern for the future inflicts two wounds upon the patient. First, by trying to fill their minds with anxieties of all forms that may appear tomorrow. We deprive the patient of their true connection with the present. Thus, we move the patient away from the place where true grace resides and entangle them in sterile thoughts and uncertainties. Moreover, when men look anxiously at the future, they neglect their current responsibilities. The patient's mind is occupied with possibilities and scenarios that will never occur, leaving them unprepared to face the realities and demands that the present imposes. By diverting their attention from the present and filling them with future fears, we make it impossible for them to live their true vocation of trusting God, accepting His will, and living each day as a gift from God. Our enemy desires that men find in Him and His providence the peace that allows them to face any circumstance, knowing that He is sovereign and takes care of all their needs. He wants them to trust, even when they do not understand. Even when situations seem hopeless, patience and trust in God are the weapons the enemy gives us to defeat despair and anxiety, and it is precisely for this reason that we must always work to keep the patient away from these virtues and lead them to worry about the future or lament the past. Seeking ways to get out of an unpleasant situation can be valid, but it is a mistake to exclude God from the process. Remember, God values obedience more than great offerings. But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. 1 Samuel 15. 22. When he asks for patience, he wants you to stop and focus on what he is doing. Even if it is not pleasant, this is for your own good. God is eternal but always punctual, never late or early, always at the right time. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Ecclesiastes 3. 11 God sees and understands all the weight you carry. Still, he asked for patience and trust. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 28, 29 Even if it seems he is not acting, be assured that he is working and will bring answers at the right time. Never try to help God, for this will result in your own destruction. Can any one of you by worrying? Add a single hour to your life. Matthew 6, 27 God's timing is beyond human understanding. What you see is overload and stress. God sees as learning a new virtue. This does not make God evil or unjust. It is your limited understanding that makes you think so. God will always show up at the right time. Instead of focusing on how you can help yourself, focus on what God is doing in you. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Galatians 6, 9 I have also been in difficult situations, trusting God for provision and direction. It was not easy. And at one point I began to lose hope and think about how to solve the situation on my own, despite God's promises. I then realized I was trying to help God. I stopped, abandoned my plans, and sought His forgiveness. Beloved, I had to surrender everything to God, and He wonderfully surprised me. Beloved, trusting in God and waiting on Him is not a sign of foolishness or laziness, nor of irresponsibility. In God's kingdom, our ways may seem foolish to the common man, but this is how God works, using foolish things to confound the wise. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 1 Corinthians 1.27 He asks you to leave control of your life in His hands. Trying to control everything makes God withdraw. Even if your situation is more challenging than mine, nothing is beyond God's control. As the creator of the universe, he understands everything and is not limited by time. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty Revelation 1. 8. Will you wait for the Lord, 
who is timeless and understands you, or will you try to help yourself? The help you need comes from God, and only He can help you. No man can help you, and you are not capable of helping yourself. God is man's helper and is the only one who can open the door that the enemy has closed against you. He can give you the necessary understanding to face challenges. Beloved, only God can help you. Get out of this complicated situation, and His help is always available. Your duty is to ask for this help in Isaiah 4031. The Bible says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When you learn to wait on the Lord, your strength and hope are renewed and you develop the capacity to overcome your worries, limitations, and everything that seems to pull you down. Waiting on the Lord brings many benefits and can be extremely rewarding. Never be in a hurry to seek help outside of God or let yourself be overwhelmed by the pressure that drives you to act without Him. This can lead to regret. Always surrender everything to God and trust Him to perform His wonders. Often you may become a target of mockery, pity, and slander, but this should never be a reason to give up on God. Think of Hannah's story. She waited on God, and despite years of waiting, she received her blessing. Your case may take more or less time, but trust in God is essential. Hannah was mocked by her rival, but waited and achieved victory. Her son became more famous than her rival's children. When you trust in God and not your own ideas, He grants you advances beyond human expectations. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. Always trust in God, and not in your own understanding, for it is limited and can fail. In God's eyes, our understanding is foolish. God does not want you to go through trials of pain without obtaining wonderful testimonies. That is why He asks for patience. Always be patient with God. He will fix everything in your life at the right time. Sometimes the pressure can make you forget about God, but never let that happen. Make God your first choice, regardless of the weight of your battles or the decisions to be made. Always trust in God. Do not take the situation lightly, nor exaggerate it. Take everything to God. It is He who should handle the situation, and He will answer you at the right time. Amen. In life, we must choose to trust in God instead of panicking. We must remember that God is never in a hurry nor late. His timing is always perfect. God knows what is best and responds in the best way. He exemplifies this with the story of Lazarus, where people thought Jesus was late and that nothing could be done. Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. John 11, 4, 33, 25, 26, 43. 44. Proving that God's timing transcends human understanding. This explains to us that God is never late, and His plans for you, as said in Jeremiah, are always perfect. Your faith must be strengthened while you wait patiently and trust in God, ensuring that He receives all the honor and respect. God will provide for your needs at the appropriate time and come to your aid. At the right time, He will hear your prayers and meet your needs, responding according to His plan, which may be a yes, no, or wait. Even when you do not understand what God is doing, trust that He knows what is best for you and will help you overcome the current situation. Sarah tried to help God during a time of oppression, resulting in division within God's family. It is important to understand that God does not need human help. He seeks a willing, obedient, and trusting heart. The story of the man who tried to prevent the ark from falling and died in the process illustrates that helping God is unnecessary and dangerous. God is sovereign and acts independently of us. Understanding God's ways and timing is essential for fully trusting Him. The waiting period on God is not for lamenting or resting, but for reflecting on your life and ministry. Use this time to make God proud of you, not to hasten His answers, but to become a vessel available for His use. When God sees the sincerity of your heart and worship, He delights in granting your desires. While waiting, have the right motives, maintain good associations, and live a holy life. This prepares you for God's answers. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. 
Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. 1 Corinthians 1 5, 58, The waiting time should be a period of self-construction and empowerment. Often God withholds answers, not because we do not need them, but because we are not prepared for what we desire. Instead of blaming God for closed doors, examine your life and ask if you are prepared to sustain the desired miracle. God does not waste resources. If He sees you are prepared, He will grant your desires. The waiting process is difficult, but should be well utilized. Attending Christian meetings, reading good books, and surrounding yourself with like-minded people are effective ways to build yourself up. Strive to maintain a close relationship with God, to better understand His ways. Waiting can be difficult, but keep waiting and never give up, for God is all you have and the only one who can help. He is timeless and always punctual, never late nor early. Trust Him and believe in what He says, knowing that His timing is different from ours, as said in Psalm 94. Psalm 94. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Being a Christian today involves many daily demands that can divert our focus from God. God must be our number one priority above possessions, careers, churches, money, studies, friends, and even spouses and children. He should not be just another piece in the game of life, but the main player who directs our lives. God wants preeminence, as stated in the first commandment in Exodus 20, 3. You shall have no other gods before me. Not putting God first is like buttoning a coat incorrectly. Getting the first button right aligns all the others. By putting God first, everything in your life will align with His will. God organizes everything according to His plan and purpose when you place Him at the center. Sometimes life challenges us hard, and you may not see how things will improve, whether in business, family, or other areas. Do not yield to despair and self-pity. Put God first, diverting your attention from the struggles to Him. Your life may not be perfect, but God is greater than your circumstances. By committing to His business, He will take care of yours. Putting God first, you will reap the benefits of this priority. Putting God first in your life frees you from worry and brings boundless peace. Things begin to fall into place and what seemed mundane gains new meaning. You will see God's hand bringing divine order to your life. God's peace, which transcends all understanding, will keep you free from anxiety and focused on Him. Jesus talks about this in Matthew 6, 25. 33. Encouraging us not to worry about life, food, drink, or clothing, for life is more than that. He points to the birds and lilies, which are cared for by God without their own effort highlighting that we are even more valuable. God knows what we need and calls us to seek first His kingdom and righteousness, promising that all necessary things will be added to us. Jesus is not saying it is wrong to work or take care of our responsibilities, but that these things should not be the priority in our lives. Before preparing for work, we should connect with God. Before interacting with other people, we should meet with God. Before seeking advice from others, we should seek wisdom from the Lord. We should involve Him in our decisions and invest more in our spiritual lives. By putting God first, our lives will have direction and be transformed. Giving God the first place should not be based on emotions or circumstances, but a daily choice and constant commitment. Colossians 3 2 urges us to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Even without understanding the current situation or seeing a way out, the important thing is to keep the focus on the Lord. Trusting in God, even in storms. God has unique ways of resolving things for those who love and trust Him. In everything you do, do it as if you were doing it for the Lord. If you are raising a family, do it for God. If you are studying, study for God. If you serve as a doorkeeper in your church, be dedicated, for you are serving God. This will bring peace and divine order to your life, and the Lord will open the doors of heavenly blessings. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians 3 2 3 24. Many Christians do not live blessed lives because they do not prioritize God. We must live for God if we want the blessings that come with this choice, even if you get distracted and prioritize other things. You know that you can always return to Him. You are not late, and God is not angry with you. Even if you have made mistakes in the past, God is as close as your next prayer. Return to Him, ask for forgiveness, and regain focus on the things that matter most, God and His kingdom. Let your Father know your needs, and ask Him to remove the giants in your life. He is a mighty warrior. If you have been praying and still do not see results, keep praying. As 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 says, Pray without ceasing. Maintain faith and keep believing in God for your miracle. Pray constantly 
and keep your head up, for the Lord will surely pour out His blessings on you at the right time. Seek an intimate relationship with God that cannot be shaken by financial problems, broken relationships or illnesses. We cultivate our relationship with God through prayer, reading the Bible and fellowship with other believers. We must be alert to the seemingly harmless ways the devil uses to draw us away from God. We must pursue God, not in our strength, but in His. If we remain obedient and dependent on Him, He will help us do what is right. The Bible exhorts us not to trust in our own understanding, but to acknowledge God in everything and He will straighten our paths. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. His arm is not too short to save, and His promises are true. Amen. Everything we ask Him with faith, He will give us. Let us rid ourselves of everything that threatens to steal to your God's place. In our lives, Pastor Adrian Rogers said, The plague of the 21st century is a divided heart Christianity. Are we seeking Christ wholeheartedly? Is anything in your life more important than Jesus Christ? If so, it has become an idol. Consider the steps you can take today to remove that and put Christ back in His rightful place. From birth to death, we meet many people, from our parents, friends, teachers, to co-workers and strangers. Each person can share something valuable like love, friendship, and trust. Despite this, many feel alone and disconnected, as if on an island. Recently, I talked to someone who felt lonely despite having friends, but did not trust them. I have many acquaintances and friends but only a few I trust. This highlights the importance of trust for lasting relationships. Without trust, relationships tend to be short. Due to our imperfect nature, we sometimes break others' trust, intentionally or not, causing damage that some relationships cannot overcome. Trust is the confident expectation of something from someone, like expecting leaders to serve us well, parents to love us, or romantic partners to be faithful. However, these expectations are not always met. Leaders can be corrupt, Parents can show favoritism, and partners can cheat. Whom can we trust? Fortunately, we can fully trust God. He is faithful and trustworthy, never lies, never takes advantage of us, and never acts selfishly. God will never let us down or betray our trust. We can always count on Him in any situation. The Bible warns us about trusting exclusively in humans, as in Jeremiah 175. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Psalm 125, 1-2 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken, but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people, both now and forevermore. Isaiah 4, 0, 31 states, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. We should not stop trusting people. The Bible teaches that trusting God is the best choice, but also acknowledges the importance of trusting the right people for the right things. Trusting people is wise and essential for healthy relationships. God created Eve for Adam, showing that he desires us to have companionship. Trusting others allows us to reap the benefits of good relationships. Couples who trust each other experience peace and tranquility. Friends who trust each other share secrets and support one another. Children who trust adults seek support and share their concerns. We must remember that none of us is perfect, only God is. He can do and be everything we need. Only God truly has our best interests at heart, and we can trust Him in all areas of our lives. He has the best solutions to our problems and answers to our questions. Trusting in God guarantees victory in the end regardless of difficulties. He will fulfill the promises made in the Bible and will not let us trust Him in vain. If you are at a point in your life where you feel hurt, disappointed, lonely, broken, and in much pain, know that God is there. Even without a shoulder to cry on, you have a ground to kneel on. Cry out to God and call upon His name. People will never be enough for you. It is useless to seek comfort, validation, joy, or happiness in them. No one will ever be everything you need, but God always will be. When you need protection, God is your protector. When you need healing, He is your healer. If you are lonely, remember you have a great friend in Jesus, always ready to listen to you. Talk to Him without fear of judgment or exposure. God is always faithful, trustworthy, and worthy of trust. He gives you everything you need at the right time, never too early, never too late. God never gives up on you and loves you unconditionally. He offers as many chances as you need to get up again. God sees you as a perfect child, worthy of being saved by the blood of Jesus. Whether you have trusted Him before or are coming back now, He is ready to welcome you back. Difficult times do not mean God has abandoned you. 
He uses these seasons to strengthen your faith and grow your spiritual muscles, so that nothing can shake you from the firm foundation of Christ. Whom do you really need? You need peace, tranquility, a calm heart, and constant joy. These things are only found in God. Trusting in God means not needing to see the whole way or have all the answers. Just trust in His plan. The Bible prioritizes seeking God above all, because He is the central piece that keeps everything in order. God is trustworthy and will never disappoint you. There are times when we face painful and frightening situations that seem insurmountable. In these moments, we need God's wisdom and guidance. He is an expert in creating ways where there seems to be none, as promised in Isaiah 43, 19c. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God works on our behalf, even when we do not see it. He can deliver us from all difficult situations and lead us to safety. When we are at a dead end, God is with us and will find a way out. His power shines in desperate circumstances, showing that we cannot trust in our abilities or possessions, but only in Him. God can create a way through the wilderness, split the sea, move mountains, and defeat giants in our path. He is capable of protecting us, delivering us, and carrying us through any storm. He is the God of wonders, always faithful and able to make a way where there seems to be none. God requires faith from us. Do not fear, but face your fears with God's word. Victory comes from trusting in God's promise, not self-confidence. Resist fear, anxiety, and unbelief, and fight to remain firm in faith. Believe in God's constant grace and meditate on His promises. Satan feeds on fear, anxiety, and suffering, trying to convince us that God is distant. God may seem distant in trials, especially if we move away from His Word. When you do not know what to say, listen to God's voice. Your only hope for healing, strength, protection, and help is God's Word. Trusting in God means trusting in what He says. He says, I am for you. Romans 8. 31 reminds us that if God is for us, who can be against us? God will give His grace at the moment of need, sufficient for the worst moments. Look to God in the midst of fear and confusion, and He will guide your heart and mind opening a way for you and accompanying you. Do not fear is a common reminder in the Bible, because we often forget and worry about the future, causing fear and anxiety. Jesus reminds us that we can trust God as our loving Father, who fights our battles, protects us, and brings peace. We must divert our gaze from fears and focus on Him. Faith in God gives us victory over fear. Fear is a powerful tool of the enemy to paralyze believers' faith, even in difficult times. We should not fear for God still performs miracles and opens ways. The enemy tries to terrify us with fiery darts of fear, but God is with us as Emmanuel. God never abandons us, even when things do not happen. As we want, He is trustworthy and always by our side, in difficult times such as losing loved ones' illnesses. Financial or marital crises, God strengthens and helps us. Isaiah 41, 10 tells us, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If you no longer believe in anyone, you can believe in God. Other marriages may have ended in divorce, but yours does not have to. God is opening a way for you. Do not fear. Your children will live to fulfill their destiny. Do not fear bankruptcy or illnesses, for God has the final word. God ensures what He will do, but cannot force you to believe. Choose not to fear and cling to God's word. Life can be uncertain and lead to fear of the unknown. When life hits you hard, your ability to overcome it depends on how well you know God. Remember David facing Goliath without fear, for he knew God's help. The world is unstable and uncertain, but living above these uncertainties requires knowing God intimately and trusting Him and His ways. Sometimes everything seems out of control, causing discouragement and frustration. The worst situation is facing this, without hope and security in God for this leaves a person vulnerable to negativity. God asked Moses to move forward with the Israelites into the Red Sea so they would trust him. Exodus 1 4 1 3 15 shows God encouraging Moses to move forward, trusting in God's deliverance. Similarly, God calls us to move forward with faith, rejecting fear and trusting him, as in Isaiah 4 3 19, where God promises to do new things and open ways in the wilderness. We must recognize and be grateful for God's daily blessings. Often we get used to and feel entitled to them, but everything is a gift from God. Luke 1 7 1 4 19 tells the story of Jesus healing ten lepers, 
but only one returned to thank him. Jesus emphasizes the importance of gratitude, showing that faith and gratitude are essential. In biblical times, lepers were exiled and stayed away from their families. Jesus healed ten lepers, but only one. A Samaritan returned to thank him. This shows that Jesus values gratitude. The nine Jews probably returned to their families but did not recognize the importance of thanking Jesus. The Samaritan demonstrated true faith by showing gratitude, receiving a spiritual blessing beyond physical healing. We must recognize our blessings as gifts from God and thank Him properly. Often we move on with our lives without recognizing the dangers we are spared from daily. Recognizing these daily gifts from God, like arriving at work safely, can make a big difference. Adopting the practice of thanking God daily helps us appreciate and recognize His continuous blessings. One of the most beautiful demonstrations of gratitude in the Bible is in Luke 7, when a sinful woman pours expensive perfume on Jesus while he dines at a Pharisee's house. She wets Jesus' feet with her tears, wipes them with her hair, kisses them, and anoints them with perfume. The Pharisees were surprised, but Jesus appreciated the woman's sacrifice. He highlighted that, while the Pharisees did not offer even water for his feet, the woman demonstrated great love and repentance. The woman knew she was a sinner, but also knew that Jesus would welcome her. She recognized the great gift of Jesus' forgiveness and showed gratitude, unlike the Pharisees who considered themselves righteous and did not recognize their need for forgiveness. Jesus teaches us to forgive one another and values genuine gratitude. We Christians often expect security, provision, and salvation from God without feeling grateful when we receive these things. God gives us these blessings despite our ingratitude, but He desires that we be grateful. Gratitude keeps us joyful, content, and at peace. Through gratitude, we respond to God's call and demonstrate our love for Him. Jesus told the parable of two people with forgiven debts, one of 500 denarii and the other of 50 denarii. He asked which one would love the lender more. And the obvious answer is the one forgiven the greater debt. This illustrates that greater recognition and gratitude generate more love for God. We do not deserve any of God's blessings, especially salvation. Galatians 3, 2, 6, 29 reinforces that we are all children of God in Christ without distinction. God provides not only our daily needs, but also our eternal salvation. We have much to be grateful for daily. Even in difficult situations, we must remember the supreme blessing of God's righteousness and forgiveness. We must show our gratitude to God throughout the day, every day. The easiest way to show gratitude to God is by praying and thanking Him for all the blessings. Amen. Another way is by demonstrating similar behavior towards others. In Matthew 18, Jesus tells the parable of the unmerciful servant, who was forgiven a large debt by the king, but did not forgive a small debt of a fellow servant. The king was angry and punished the servant. Jesus teaches us to forgive one another as God has forgiven us. Ephesians 4. 32 reinforces the importance of being kind and compassionate. God has given us more than we deserve, canceled our debts, and welcomed us. We cannot repay God, but we can show gratitude by demonstrating love and kindness to others. 1 Thessalonians 5 16 18 encourages us to always pray and give thanks. Every day brings challenges, but we can choose to be calm and at peace or worried and anxious. God allows difficult situations to strengthen our character. Trust that God is working for your good. He created you and loves you. Start each day with God, reflecting on His blessings and how He guides you. In moments of overload, remember that God wants us to enjoy the new day He created. He will give peace and joy to loved people daily. Starting the day with God should be a daily routine for Christians. Our busy lives often pull us away from God, but it is in these moments that we need Him the most. Spending time with God in the morning gives us wisdom and grace to face the day. This involves communicating with God, listening to His voice, and paying attention to what He reveals to us. We should not rush this time with God. We should set aside time to listen to the Holy Spirit as we pray and enjoy God's presence. It is crucial to remove all distractions like the phone. During this time, to avoid distractions, turn off the phone before bed or leave it in another room to focus entirely on God in the morning. Prioritizing this time with God strengthens us and better prepares us for the day's challenges. To start the day with God, make it a priority and the first thing on your to-do list. Set the alarm 15 to 30 minutes earlier if necessary. Keep your morning time with God simple, focusing on meeting Him and talking. Creating a daily habit of starting the day with God will bring significant changes in your life, improving your attitude, speech, and reactions to daily events. Do not give up if you miss a day or two. Keep striving and investing in this habit. Modern life is hectic and often pulls us away from God. Always remember to prioritize your Creator. Waking up in the morning is a sign 
that God thinks of you. So start the day thanking Him for the gift of life. Do not let the stress and anxiety of the previous day ruin your peace. In the morning, dedicate quality time to God without rushing or fragmenting this moment. Commit to your morning time with God to reciprocate His love and enjoy the new day. When overwhelmed with life's activities, it is crucial to adopt alternatives to start the day with God successfully. First, go to bed early to wake up energized. Many cannot communicate with God in the morning because they sleep late and wake up late. Value your relationship with God, making it a daily priority. Distractions are inevitable, but make God number one, and He will alleviate your anxieties. Your morning time with God can be simple, singing hymns, reading and meditating on Scripture, and observing a period of silence. Turn off devices and focus on the sky and the cross. Reflect on the blessings and dangers overcome with God's help. This time equips you with a positive attitude to face the day's challenges. The Bible says every day is full of evil and talking to God in the morning is essential. He can instruct you and show a summary of the day's events. Do not rush. Wait to hear God's voice. 2 Corinthians 3. 17 says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Starting the day in the Lord's presence grants peace, freedom from fear and confidence. The early hours of the morning set the tone for the rest of your day. So start with God. I want to thank everyone who watched the video until the end. Since this video is very long, I will not include a prayer, but we have three incredible prayers in our prayer playlist. I will leave it here for you to check out. May God greatly bless your lives and your families. See you in the next video.